Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to show you how you can explore another web page's HTML and CSS to maybe get some ideas or at least to uh, trigger some questions that you might ask in class. There's a lot we can take or learn from other web pages. I'm going to jump over here. I'm going to visit apple.com, and uh, it won't take long before you realize I go to Apple's website a lot just to look at examples of HTML and CSS. I think they're really good for a, for a learning environment because their markup is really neatly written. They're, they're doing a lot of contemporary stuff without going uh, too overboard and tricky. So I'm looking at their web page and before going into what's called an inspector mode, I'm just going to view the source code normally. So on most browsers, you can press Control U and you'll view some source code. Otherwise, you can usually right-click in a blank area. Now, it's tough with Apple's site because they've got this huge hyperlink right here. But if you find a blank area where it's not a hyperlink and right-click, you want to look for View Page Source or Control U. And we have all of their HTML and stuff like that. They've got some nice tabbing, you know, so it's relatively easy to read. Now, in the first week of web development, this is, you know, it's just going to be maybe a little bit intimidating, a little bit overwhelming. But understand that I'm going to want you to go back and visit other pages on a weekly basis. And by the time you get to weeks 5, 6, and 7, and 10, you're going to really start to understand most of what's going on. You might not be able to easily reproduce it within a matter of minutes, but you'll kind of understand what they're trying to do. Now to really review this, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. And I'm just pressing Control plus on my keyboard and zoomed in quite a bit. And we can see a couple things that we might want to emulate and a couple things just to take a make a mental note of. Obviously, they're using a doc type definition. All professional web pages should be doing that. They have an HTML tag. Notice they're using an XML namespace in here. That's a pretty old technique back when XHTML1 was the, was the main language. Most people don't do that anymore. Sometimes you will see older methods being used on even these really big modern websites because the teams that created them are so big and the people on those teams have been making web pages for a long time and they're also using some older techniques. But remember, old techniques are not necessarily bad techniques. The customers of Apple, the people that visit Apple's website, don't care about the XML namespace being used. It's not going to affect their decisions to buy or sell. So you might make the case that, well, it's not worth Apple's time and energy to take this old legacy information out because it's not going to make the website better, it's not going to make the website faster, and it's not going to allow customers to buy more product. So just because you see it on a website doesn't mean that's necessarily something you'll be doing on your websites. And, and they have a lot going on here. Now I do want to uh, word wrap, so let me go ahead and click on line wrap up here at the top. And, okay, so that's their opening HTML tag. Bunch of stuff going on in there. Opening head tag. Meta character encoding. You see this space, space and slash at the end of the meta tag? That's another old school technique. So back when XHTML1 came out, that was required for self-closing tags. Um, image tags, meta tags. Um, sometimes you'll see it like in option tags and drop down menus. But uh, again, that's not necessary anymore. It doesn't hurt anything that it's there. But when you see that kind of stuff, it kind of reminds you that, oh, I bet the, the people that are working on this web page, they were obviously making web pages in the late 90s and the early 2000s. And they've developed that, uh, that habit that hasn't gone away. Let's scroll on down. Let's get down into the body section of the page. And let's see, I'm kind of skipping over any JavaScript. Okay, still seeing meta tags. And I start to see divs in unordered lists, so that lets me know I'm in the body, even though I didn't notice the body tag. We look through and we can start to see different things. Now, just because you start to see it on Apple's web page doesn't mean you can instantly start to create it yourself, because there's going to be a lot of CSS that goes along with this. But we can start to get a feel for the HTML being used. And when you see an, a tag being used that you're not sure of, well, that can start you off in a new research path. And obviously, we see unordered list, UL, LI for list item. That kind of stuff is going to happen. Uh, label tags, those are used with forms. So they have a label for something, and then within that, they have more span tags. A span is like an inline version of the div tag. So whereas div is a block element, span is an inline element. But they have the same basic purpose, usually, to mark something up 
generally giving it a class or ID. Interesting. Okay, so we can easily see the HTML for Apple's website. Now let's hunt around for a little bit and I'm looking for a CSS file and I see something right up here. Now when you see a reference to a style sheet, this is back up in the head section by the way, I can click on this link and it's going to take me right into a CSS file. Unfortunately, our CSS file has been minified. It's taken away all the spaces and line breaks. So it functions, but it's just not as easy to look at. However, once you start to get a feel for your CSS language, then you'll start to understand things that are going on. For instance, I see right here, list items. List items have a margin of zero and are displaying as block. That's kind of weird actually, because list items are naturally already block elements. So they're probably writing it this way to ensure that list items are block elements in case somebody else on the team made list items inline or inline block at some other previous juncture. Okay, but there's a lot going on in there. So you want to explore a little bit. There's flex direction row reverse. So basically that's a flex box property. Flex direction row, meaning it's going to be in a horizontal row. Reverse, meaning it's going to be swapped around. So instead of going the normal one, two, three, four, five, it'll display as five, four, three, two, one. And where are they applying that to? Well, if I backtrack a little bit, it looks like just before the opening curly brace, we see a dot row reverse. Just because it's in the CSS doesn't mean it's being used, but because they have it in the CSS, it means they could put class equals row reverse to something, it'll automatically get this classification. Pretty cool. So once again, your goal is not to just look at Apple's code or anybody's code and understand 100% of it completely and then just take a few minutes and reproduce it. But get interested in when you see another website doing something, especially another website that you visit frequently. Look at their HTML and look at their CSS. Last but not least, when you're looking at a web page, let me zoom out on this, don't forget your browser has some pretty nice web developer features that can make things pretty interesting too. So I'm using Brave, which is a Chrome-based browser. I can press Control-Shift-I, and that's going to open up my, my console, my web developer console. And there's this little button right up here called the Inspector. If I click on that, I can now hover my mouse over different sections of the web page, and it'll give me an indication of what that element is. For instance, I'm going to hover over the word phone, and I'm just looking at the little screen tip, the pop-down. It's hard to read sometimes but I can see it's a dot, then it has a large um, CSS class. Actually, it might have two CSS classes. But I see a on there. That indicates that the, it's an anchor element, and it gives me some characteristics about it. If I move my mouse a little bit further out, just past the word phone, well, I'll go a little further out, I see the unordered list. I'm looking at a screen tip, so this is an unordered list, a bulleted list, basically, and it has a class, ac-gn-list. I'm going to click on that for a moment. Now when I click on this, it activates my side panel over here so I can see the HTML used to create that. And there it is, unordered list, class, ACG, and list. Just beneath that, I have to get rid of my picture there, um, I can see the CSS that controls that right there. And there's the CSS. Let's see if we can't do something relatively interesting. Now you'll notice some of these CSS lines are crossed out. That's because they're being overridden by something else, so they're not actually being put to use. But you can uncheck things to take things out and see how it impacts the web page. I don't think there's anything here that's going to be too obvious to us, like width or height. I think those are being controlled also by the elements inside of the unordered list. So it's not too exciting there. Let's see, can we do anything weird to maybe the anchor tags? So. If I expand this unordered list up in the HTML, I can say, okay, well, there's a list item. And let's go to the list item. Okay, there's the one for the Mac. And then there's the anchor tag for the Mac. I'm just going to click on it right up there in the syntax up at the top. That gives me the CSS for the anchor tags. Okay, so they've got a background repeat on there. They're oh, using a background image, I guess, to make that dark gray color. Interesting. What if I turn off the background image? Uncheck that box. Interesting, the actual the word Mac goes away. That makes, makes me think that the word Mac might be 
part of the background image. Unusual. Okay, I'm going to uncheck that. And let's see, I'm going to type in here. I'm going to just go ahead and click. And I'm going to type in background color colon red. And you can see that that red shows up right in there. So I basically have replaced the background color with a background image. If I turn the background image back on, there it is. Oh, we see the words Mac show up. So that lets us know that the, yeah, so the, the words Mac are part of a background image. That's a little bit unusual. It's not what I expected. Um, Apple used to use images in their navigation menu for the text many years ago, and then they got away from that, but it looks like they've come back with it. So once again, this is just a kind of a fun little way to explore what other web pages are doing. So definitely get into that yourself. Look at web pages, control U to view the source code of that web page, see what's going on in there, click on CSS files, and then definitely jump over and use the inspector on your browser to explore the HTML and the CSS for elements. And don't feel bad about messing around with what they've got. You're not going to break anything. It's just an experiment. Have fun, and thanks for hanging out with me.